Welcome back everyone. So today I'll be showing you how to use easel by inventables to control um, your Jinmitsu um, CNC machine. This works for either of them or even other brands of CNC machines as long as it runs with the gerbil controller. So for my setup right now I have the I have a piece of quarter inch plywood connected to my um, build platform using the stock connectors and some cardboard underneath so that way I don't mess up my aluminum. It's best not to use cardboard. I would actually advise using a piece of MDF that is the same size as um, your build platform. For In my case it's 300 by um, 180 millimeters which I have a piece of plywood that I could use for that but it's not connected yet. I would advise using MDF instead though just because of the fact that it's generally a lot flatter. I also have a um, straight cut bit on there. On. Great. Camera's a little stuck. So I'm running a straight cut bit. That way I can easily cut the um, plywood without it splitting because an upcut bit will actually cause it to, um, well, split because it's lifting up. And sorry for the camera wobbles. There we go, camera's repositioned. I'm actually using a vise to hold this camera in place because um, tripod is not enough. Okay, so let's hop over to the computer and show you how to use the software. Okay, so now that we're at the computer, I have Easel opened up. This will be linked in the description. And what you're going to do is you're going to make sure your machine's plugged in and turned on first. Okay, so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go over here, press Carve, select Enter COM port manually, and I already typed in 5 here because that's what mine's on, and I'll show you how to find this number, and then you'll press OK. And you're going to go machine, set up your machine, and then we're going to select XCarve. Motion controller is going to be Andro um, Arduino and G Shield. Rail size is 500 by 500 millimeters, even though that's not the actual size of our machine. And then lead screw will be M8 threaded rod which X-Carve, well, this Inventables discontinued September 2016, as you can see there, um, but we're not using an Inventables machine. Now I'm going to go to Spindle, and I'm going to select Other, and enter in max RPM as 9,000. And I do not have a dust shoe on, so I'm not going to check that. I'm going to press Confirm Settings, and it's going to ask for a communication port. Now, if you know how to find these in your computer, you can do that and go about the roundabout way for that. Or what you can do is you can open up the file that came with your machine, open up Candle, or, and this is all in the files for machine. If you want to know how to get to it, I have a video on how to use Candle, um, and I 3D carved a dragon. Now, well, I 3D carved Saints Mart, and I have a dragon in it too. Service settings and then press the down arrow just to make sure it's up to date and it says communication port 5 right here so let's x this out x candle out because otherwise both will try and communicate with it and just turn 5 right here now it's processing now it's all set up okay so now we want to make sure our machine's moving in the correct way so for the x axis um whenever i press the arrows I, it should be moving there. Hold on, I'm going to move the z-axis up a little bit just for safety. So z-axis is moving up, so that's yes. It moves down, so it's working good there. Um, x-axis. It is moving to the correct side whenever I press that. So I'm going to press yes on here. And it does move back too. And now y-axis, whenever I press up, well the bed should be moving towards me because the spindle is moving upwards. So it's a opposite of what you would assume, or at least what I would normally assume. 
And then if I press down, it should be moving the bed away from me. So all that's working, I'm going to check yes. If you press no, it will swap the direction and fix the issue for you. And then OK. Spindle control process, preference, um, it's an automatic spindle. Um, this machine does not have stock a um, manual one. But if you switch it to a different router, you might end up having to use a manual one, like a brushless router. Save spindle preference. Now let's turn spindle on. As you can see, the spindle is on. Now let's turn it off and click continue. No, disable homing. You want to click because otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to try and home and you don't have any limit switches unless you've modified your machine. And we do not have a Z probe either. However, I might be making a video on how to add homing switches, a Z probe, and all of that into your machine. Um, I know one guy in the Facebook group has already posted instructions on how to do that that are written, so I might make a video version. So for now, just press no and run test carve. Wait for the sky to load here. So we have a test carve set up. I don't care to carve little easel guy. Instead, I want to make a little keychain. So first off, let's go in here. I select the correct bit. I have the 1 8 inch straight cut. Cuts will mess up plywood and it's not advisable. And you can enter in under other an entirely different size if you wanted to. But for now, 1 8 inch um, straight cut. Now let's go to our material right up here, drop down menu, and you have all sorts of materials with preset um, options for them, which is great. For now, we're just going to be using birch plywood. And for the X, I have about 80 millimeters. And for the um, length in Y, I have 180 millimeters. Actually, I'm just going to lower the to 60 so I don't risk running into the um, little clamps holding it down and thickness I'm actually going to switch this into inches quickly um, it's going to 0 0.25 for my material at least you might be using something different so feel free to use whatever now you also have cut settings up here and you are able to add in extra additional bits, which is nice and all. However, we will not be doing that um, right now. This software is super user friendly. It has all sorts of apps to make literally anything. Super useful and easy to use. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a little CB 3D keychain, Caleb Builds 3D. So I'm going to press text. I'm going to choose a nice font. Um, I'm going to use Vimeo. And type in CB 3D, even though that's off the screen slightly. Where's my mouse? Lift it up here. And as you can see over on the other side, we do get a demo of what this looks like which is nice, and you can scale it by grabbing these corners here, um, and or this here is if you want to scale along this direction, or if you want to do unproportional scaling like that. Let's undo that quickly. And then you have rotation right up here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I know it's not exactly 90, but you're also able to go under shape right here and set your angle to 90 degrees. Enter and it will correct to that. And you can also, if you don't like your font, go back and change it here also, along with select where it moves by. Um, so if you select here, it's going to be getting the X and Y coordinates from the center of this. Um, but I'm just going to keep the bottom corner for here right now. And you're able to type in coordinates. So say I wanted this to be right at the bottom corner where I'm about to cut, go to zero, zero, it's going to pop down right here. And the starting corner is right at this dot, so just keep that in mind. However, if you want to make it where you start carving from the center of your piece, you just set the center, you select the center button, 
you go zero, zero, and now it's going to carve from the center of your piece. And just because something's off of the build area, it will still cut it and generate the code. So if you press simulate, um, you can see it will try and go off and get it. And that would take about two minutes to cut this guy. However, I do not want it to do that. Um, so let's go back up here. And now let's drop in a square. Let's position it about right. You can drag it up and scale it however you want. And I'm going to add a corner radius. Nice thing squares have. And I'm going to go about 20 millimeters. That's a bit much. How about 10? And once you set it, you do have to individually adjust these guys. Oh, 10 is still too much. Oh, it's in inches. That's my issue. Okay. Yeah, that's that's way more than what's needed. There we go. Now we're at actual 20 millimeters. Now let's go to cut. Press outline so we actually get the outline of it. And I'm just going to choose on path. Usually I do outside of path if I want to keep the dimensions of this exactly how I want it to be. Because um, that means from this corner here to this here is going to be exactly um, 50.8 millimeters with some tolerance. Um, but for this one here, I'm going to do on path, which means it's going to be 50.8 divided by um, well, minus half the drill bits width or router bits width on each side. So in all, you're losing one router's bit width on your model for doing it that way. Also, I'm going to select this text here. I am going to, you can either drag this slider here up. And I'm just going to make it cut one millimeter deep because I like shallower text. It cuts quicker and is easier to clean fuzzies off of. So let's shrink this guy a bit. And if in the preview, you can see that it is cutting good still. But if I do shrink this guy too small, it will either disappear or depending on the size of your bit, you'll just end up with something like this. So it is nice that you can see if your machine is able to cut um, what you're trying to with the bit size that you're using. I'm going to make this guy a little narrower and drop this down here. And I'm going to use this tool here. This is a point tool. And I'm just going to drop this guy right like that. Now, to make sure everything's aligned and centered, I'm just going to go up here and press this button here. And everything's going to be lined up along this axis. However, since the text box is does not have the text centered in it for some reason, it is off to the side. So I'll manually move that using the arrow keys instead of dragging. And if you hold shift while using the arrow keys, it will jump a little farther. And you also have other alignment options like this would make them all aligned to the center. It, it's super useful. And now let's just move this guy over here. Oops, jumped a little too far. It looks just about centered. And also, I want this guy here to cut all the way down, the whole 6.3 millimeters. Actually, I'm going to adjust this to 6.5. Um, because my wood is not exactly precise and slightly warped. So, which is why my last cut did not go through before this. And I have not measured it exactly, but that should work. No, just for safety, 6.4. Because I don't want to go too deep. Okay, and if you select this here, you do have the option of tabs on here. You turn it off, those yellow markers disappear. You press it again. You can drag the tabs around, which is super useful. And the little tabs, you're able to adjust the parameters right here, which is, in my opinion, great. So now let's go and simulate, see how long this takes, see if I want to scale it down. OK, it says two minutes. That's a nice quick cut. And if you look at it, you do see right here, it does do a little hop up, but it does not show the tabs in the 3D render. So I'm going to go to cut settings first. I'm going to go to custom. It tends to get the feed rate and plunge rate good on this. However, I want it to be a little slower um, on this guy. So I'm going to go 0.75 millimeters. Actually, I'll just switch it to one. One worked good last time. 
I'll just stick with 0 0.75. This is up to you. 1.3 does work. I can guarantee you that. Okay, fine. I'll just do 0 0.5. Make it take two times as long. Should take about four minutes to cut then. Five minutes. Okay. And as you can see, it's going to do two passes right here. And that's just going to put a little bit less stress on my bit since this is an older bit that I used from work. Um, since we have an X-carve there. And this should work. So I'm going to go to carve. Now you have options to control your machine using this here, but you also have keyboard controls, which is great. Um, and not showing me all of them, but you have using your arrow keys, you can move the machine. If you hold shift, you're able to control up and down. So what I'm going to do is first off, verify my material thickness is correct. So confirm material thickness, then my material is secure. My bit size is correct. Now I need to move the bit over there. So let's go and move it using either pressing the buttons, or in my case, I'm just gonna use arrow keys because it's easier. And we're going to home this just like we did in the um, how to use candle um, tutorial. Now you want to, if there's a little bit of resistance turning it, that, um, when it, that's how you know you hit the wood spot on with these kind of bits. Um, otherwise, you can do a paper test or just eyeball it. Personally, I just prefer to manually do it and eyeball, unless I'm being super precise or cutting aluminum. So now I'm going to press con confirm home position. Then I'm going to raise the bit, turn spindle on. Now spindle's on, I'm gonna press this spindle is on and carve. Okay, so the cut finished. Let's see if it made it all the way through. Uh, it does not look like it, but that's okay because it's just a test cut and this is really not the ideal setup. Do not use cardboard. Yeah, it did not make it through. You can also see all the filler it has in there. Um, you can also see, hopefully, right there, you can see it well is you have the tabs and everything it just did not make it all the way through which means that it could be a few things it could be that the stepping is off for the axis right there i'll figure that out and then um put it in the comments though it's that is an m8 threaded rod so it seems like it should be working since that's what it is but the pitch could be off slightly and that would cause it not to go all the way through um, actually, let's just measure the depth of the inside text, since that was supposed to be right here, supposed to be one millimeter. Um, here, let me try to display it so you can see. And the fuzzies are easy to get off with sandpaper. It's actually, let's get some focus. It's about two millimeters. But then again, there are fuzzies in that area, so I'm going to try that again. 
There we go. It's about one mil. Yeah, just about one mil. I'll figure it out. But it definitely does work. And before I go, I have one more thing to show you on the computer. Okay, so now that we're back at the computer, first off, you can see how close it is being done um, with estimates right here. You can pause it, you can stop it, and do all that. Um, usually, it just cancels itself, but whatever. Um, it does stop the bit, luckily, and home itself. Um, but if for some reason you cannot get this part here to work and connect up, what you can do is you can actually export the G code so that you can use it on candle or something like that or if you prefer some other software and you just want to design it this year what you do is you go to machine advanced and first off you have a few cool things like upload firmware uh, machine inspector and other things actually upload firmware is let me just check this here really oh this is to update your firmware So if for some reason you did not do it um, before, yeah, actually don't do not do what I just did. That's how you break your machine. Do not click that one. Um, I'll go back and fix my firmware afterwards, but don't do that. Okay, so you go to advance and you click generate G code, export G code. And then now you have right down here um, the G code, and you're able to load that into um, Candle or some other software. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. I would love to see what you make, so please share it with the Facebook group. Have a great day, everyone.